Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Whew, got to the fifth one. All right. One last show. Okay, so um, we're going to hop right into this. So this sample is provided by Kate Krikoran, Krikoran, uh from Creative Palette. Uh, so she, she's, she's uh, been kind enough to send me another sample. I'm excited about trying this. This is the um, 2014 Trevento Amado Sur. Uh, which uh, means Southern love in Spanish. Uh, $15 retail, suggested retail price. Um, so Trevento, this is another brand that's under the Concha e Toro uh, umbrella. And um, oh, Lord. anyway, so let's kind of talk about this. So um, this, uh, the name, uh, the name of the wine, not Trevento, uh, alludes to the special affinity between Malbec grapes and the unique growing conditions found in the foothills of the Andes Mountains. With this wine, Trevento has created a distinctly South American blend of Malbec, rounded out by smaller amounts of Bonarda and Syrah. And on the front of the label, they tell you the percentages of all of them. There we go. So, let me... Let me look at that real quick on the back, on the front. So it is 79% Malbec, 11% Bonarda, and 10% Syrah. 2014 vintage, if I haven't already mentioned that. Um, with the release of this Malbec, uh, Trevento became one of the first Argentine wineries to experiment in a significant way with blends uh, that other producers in Mendoza then also started to experiment uh, with blends is a testament to the success they had with that. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna, a little more. Uh, this is from the ExcelsiorWines.com uh, website. They are the importers, I believe, of this. Um, there is there is a website for Trevento. Um, you can click the English. I am over 21, or click there. You want English, but everything stays in Spanish. Or, yeah, <laughs> um, I did Google Translate of it, and it works, and that's cool and all, but there really isn't a whole lot on the website. Um, there is a little explanation of Trevento, it's the three wins. Um, I, I, I'm sure I could have easily looked up all of it, but there's a, there's a south, I think it's a south wind, a, a, a westerly wind, and a northerly wind, or, well, anyway, there's a wind that comes off the mountains, and then there's two other winds, and each of the each of the winds that, that get into this area help with the production of grapes. Um, yeah, help with help with grape growing. Um, but the problem was that the English version uh, only does it once, and it goes by so fast that it's like, what does it say? So it was kind of a pain. Might be because it was Google Google Chrome. I don't know. I just switched over to that tonight. I mean. I have three brow I have four browsers on the computer. I never use Opera, but um, Safari seems to be like being weird. It was not letting me do use OneNote. So that's how I've been trying to use OneNote a lot more. And uh, I just well go to, go to Google Chrome um, because I'll just try it, and it was quick and it did everything I needed. So I'm gonna make that my uh, default browser for for a little while. I do that occasionally. All right, uh, let's see here. Ba 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 ba. In the mid 1990s, Concha e Toro, Chile's leading wine producer, announced a successful purchase of a collection of vineyards now accounting for almost 3,200 acres in the Mendoza region of neighboring Argentina. There was uh, little doubt on either side of the Andes that change was in the air. 
um, blah, blah, blah. So they're getting into the Tremento thing. Um, they produced, they constructed a state-of-the-art winery. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, they also got um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Alberto Anto Antonini to lead his expertise to lend his expertise to Trevento. Uh, his roster of clients includes some of the most celebrated wine estates in Italy and South America. Um, their principal vineyards are in the Uco Valley, uh, Maipu, uh, Lujan de Cusho, not Cuyo, Cusho, I found that out, San Martin and uh, Rivadavia, Rivadavia districts of Mendoza. Go away. Um, Blah, blah, blah. The vineyards receive barely eight inches of rainfall a year and are irrigated with natural snow melt from the Andes. This is very common in that part of uh, Argentina. Very interesting. Um, okay, here we go. The uh, seasonal, the beneficial effects of the three seasonal winds for which the Tremento winery is named. Uh, the icy polar wind and the winter forces sap deep within the vines. Uh, it is succeeded by the Zonda, uh, which races from the Andes, um, so the polar wind from the south, okay? Uh, the Zonda, Zonda, which races from the Andes, its warmth rousing dormant sap to generate new spring growth. In the summer months, the third wind, the um, Sudestata, provides a uh, welcome respite from the searing sun and helps temper ripening. And I think we're done with that. All right, so... Um, this is from Mendoza. Um, the wines are hand harvested. Grapes are cold macerated prior to separate varietal fermentation in stainless steel tanks. Uh, they go through mallow. Um, then uh, the separate wines are aged for eight months in French oak barrels. After assemblage, uh, the wine is aged for six months in stainless and then further aged in bottle for five months prior to release. All right, let's check it out. Did I tell you how much it was? $15 retail, suggested retail. More like dark fruit and kind of a, a pie, like a dark fruit pie. Dark cherry, dark raspberry, black raspberry. A bit of creaminess to it, a little bit of vanilla. With spice to it. It's very tasty. Um, the fruit's still coming out. Um, a little bit brighter red fruit on it now, but you still have got the, the black uh, raspberry, a little bit of black cherry, regular raspberry. Um, not as creamy on, on the palate as it was on the nose. A little bit of that bramble. This is, you know, something that when I when I'm getting a Malbec, I tend to get this. So sometimes I will confuse this with Tempranillo or a Texas wine because they have a similar, um, similar uh, part of that flavor uh, to it. Um, it's very full-bodied. Very, I would call it lush. Um, definitely dry. Uh, it doesn't let's, it doesn't necessarily lead with the fruit, but the fruit is definitely there. It's not dominating um, the 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 wine. It's a good balance between fruit and non-fruit. Um, I seem to be sensitive to alcohol today, so I keep thinking things are higher in alcohol than they are. It's only fourteen percent, so I mean it's there. Medium high, medium plus. I mean, it's good. 
I'm not raving about it, um, but then again, I don't think it's horrible. Um, it's $15, a good price point. Um, you're not spending a lot of money on it. Um, I can see definitely food with this will, this wine will do great with food. Um, and that, that's really what, this is, now all the wines I did tonight, these last other four episodes, you know, some of them are just really good, just on their own. You can just totally just sip on them and chug them or whatever. But this is, this wine I really think you, you need some food with um, to really, really, really enjoy it. It's the last wine that I'm going to swallow. Um, there's also a little bit of funk to it. It's growing on me. I like it. Um, I think 15 bucks is a good amount. You know, it's a good price for it. It's not overly priced. Um, I would not be disappointed with it. Um, yeah, if you see it out there, check it out, especially because you're getting a, a blend of other grapes in there, especially a little Bonarda, a little little uh, Syrah in there uh, to help with the um, help with the Malbec. Um, not bad. All right, so um, cool, 10-ish minutes. Um, that's going to do it for tonight. <sighs> all right. That's going to do it for this episode. Um, and after this, all my samples are done except for one more sample, which I will probably do at that next. And then I have all the wines I bought, mostly from Psalm Select, but I also have underground cellar wines. And um, we'll do that. Um, yeah, so we're going to wrap this up. Hit the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over there. Send me some ducats. Thank you for the people who did send money in last year. It's really helpful. I really appreciate it. Um, and then um, the links below for the uh, winery and um, the, the distributor. And we'll see everyone again next time.